What's going on guys? Bengal again here coming back at you with another video and today we got another rebuild Rebuilding the Cleveland Browns. This was previously the most viewed video for me every single year And I probably said that before in videos But the Browns have been so bad for so long and it seems like they finally had things turned around and then they had terrible coaching and injuries like Odell Beckham Jr. is still without question a top four receiver in the NFL was injured played with a hernia all last season and was still not even particularly bad a number of different um things contributed to his lower numbers like baker mayfield for example was so amazing his rookie year and people seem to forget that so quickly because he had a sophomore slump he was not too good last year especially in a clean pocket baker mayfield was inaccurate not too great but who knows what the browns are going to be able to do in baker mayfield's third season because the quarterback is the epicenter of a team at the end of the day, it does kind of come down to the quarterback for the success and failure of a team overall. If you have an unbelievably great quarterback, the team's going to be more successful. But you also have to account for the fact that there are 52 other players on an active roster that are also responsible for the success of the team. The quarterback cannot control the defense. The quarterback cannot control the weapons that they have on that team, cannot control the offensive line, cannot control coaching. There are so many different variables. Who knows? With the new coaching staff... And a new approach for this Cleveland Browns team, this could be a really, really good team. And I know we've been saying that for a couple years now. But it seems like all the stars might align for the Browns to finally be productive and successful in a stacked AFC North. I mean, the Bengals are even kind of a sleeper team. They had made a lot of good signings. They drafted pretty well. Who knows what the Bengals are going to do in 2020? And I'm, of course, not a Bengals fan. Uh... In retrospect, the name Bengal was not a great choice of name <laughs> to later go into football and uh, and Madden videos. But if you guys are new here, would appreciate hitting that subscribe button. Did I mumble through that? I would appreciate you hitting that subscribe button. And I know I'm not uploading so consistently right now in July. The new Madden comes out in about a month from now, so expect videos on that. On that. But I've been streaming pretty much every day. So if you're interested in Call of Duty, Warzone. Uh, or MLB The Show. I stream every single day on Twitch. The link is in the description. Twitch.tv slash Bengal. I'm almost at 22k, and I'm going to turn 22 in like uh, 10 days from now, which seems kind of crazy. It feels old. I don't feel old, dude. But um, yeah, Twitter.com slash Bengal Designs. Link is in the description as well, as is the link to one of my favorite sponsors, Hawthorne. Let's hear a quick word from them. All right, let me tell you something, boys. Uh, this video, first of all, is sponsored by Hawthorne. But listen, listen, this is the best shampoo and conditioner I've ever used bar none. It's not even really close. You got to take a quiz. I guess I did and I aced it. The quiz and everything's going to be linked down in the description. You answer all these specific questions about your hairstyle, your habits and all these things. It's a really quick quiz. And again, I must have done perfectly on it because this shampoo and conditioner is unbelievable. They have a bunch of other products as well. And my nose didn't even work that well ever since I got hit with a pitch playing baseball years ago. I swear to God, this stuff like reawakened my senses with the most powerful, amazing smell of all time. And I'm, I can't even exaggerate this enough. This is unbelievable. I cannot recommend Hawthorne highly enough. I said it with a, a thick New Jersey accent there. I apologize. But Hawthorne, use code BANGLE10 for a discount. You need this. I, I really can't put it any more bluntly than that. You need this. Badly. So this is the team post-draft. Of course, the first round pick was spent on Jedrick Wills. I thought this was a phenomenal pick for the spot. Wills was my number one tackle on the board. Well, not even just on the board, but in the draft. So uh, the Browns, I think, drafted incredibly well with the addition of him. We're going to give him star development. Actually, fuck it. I'm going to give him superstar development because... Uh, he was my number one tackle in the draft, so I think that's fair. Also, we'll give him a five-year deal because four years for the rookie contract plus the fifth-year option, which we're going to assume we're picking up. So Jedrick Wills, we're going to give superstar development. Maybe a little bit over the top, but like also not really. Yeah, he's my number one tackle. I'm fine with doing that. Um, offensive line is pretty good. Jack Conklin was paid big time to come in and play right tackle, as was Austin Hooper at a tight end. Wyatt Teller at right guard is a position we need to upgrade upon. J.C. Treader is a fine starting center. And then Joel Batonio, I think, is one of the best guards in the NFL. Really like him. Really like the left side of this offensive line in general. Of course, at running back, Nick Chubb and Kareem Hunt is the best running back duo in the NFL. Kareem Hunt is a starting running back on probably 
25 different teams in the league. He's a really solid player. Obviously, the only reason he's not a starting running back is because he kicked a lady. Not even that hard, but I mean, like, that's not, that's just make it okay because it's like he didn't kick her that hard. He still kicked the lady. You can't really do that. Nick Chubb is a beast. Superstar X Factor. Of course, Baker Mayfield still has star development. He'll be a 77 overall, and he will be our quarterback for the duration of this rebuild, I can assure you. Young quarterback, rookie contract, good development. He's going to be fantastic. Andy Janovich um, is one of the better fullbacks in the league. And then at wide receiver, Odell is a monster. We have Jarvis Landry, who is okay. Rashard Higgins and uh, Taiwan Taylor are kind of the standouts there. Could use a good third receiver, but overall, solid group. We can trade uh, David Njoku. Also have to give Harrison Bryant a uh, four-year contract as he is a rookie. Also, one of the better tight ends in the draft that the Browns managed to sag. They had a really, really good draft, and we haven't even addressed the defense side of the ball yet. They also drafted uh, Donovan Peoples-Jones at receiver. I guess we'll give him a four-year deal, but he's not even showing up on the team right now. And then when you look on the defensive side of the ball, I mean, I love the Mac Wilson draft pick from two years ago. It's incredible that he fell to them, and he played so well last year. I think Mac Wilson is primed for a breakout season in year two. He was really, really good and really underrated last year, so I wouldn't even consider it a breakout season so much. Mac Wilson's just already a really good player. Jacob Phillips was drafted. Of course, his team lost Joe Schobert. They lost Christian Kirksey. You know, they haven't had Jamie Collins for a while now. Their linebacking core is a little bit deteriorated, but they brought in B.J. Goodson, who, a former Giant, was never all that good. Went to the Packers. Sione Takitaki in here as well. Uh, safeties could be a bit better. Andrew Sandejo, or Sandejo. Uh, we had Carl Joseph, who's not really a free safety, Sheldrick Redwine. But this is the big piece. Grant Delpit. He was unbelievable his sophomore year at LSU. He would have been a, probably a top 10 pick in the draft. And then I don't know if he was playing for his draft stock or what was going on, but Grant Delpit just kind of forgot how to tackle last year. And that hurt his draft stock in a major way. But I think Grant Delpit is still a stud and could become one of the best safeties in the league in you know a three or four year window. Grant Delpit is a stud. If we get the sophomore year LSU Grant Delpit going into the league, what an unbelievable steal for the Browns. Love that pick for them. They take chances. I mean, Greedy Williams fell in the draft. Great value for him as well. Denzel Ward is already probably a top 15 corner in the league. He's a really solid player. Terrence Mitchell, uh, Kevin Johnson here as well. Former first round pick. Didn't really live up to that um, draft pick at all. And then you look on the defensive line. It's one of the better D-lines in the league. Miles Garrett, Sheldon Richardson, Larry Ogunjobi, the beast out of Charlotte. And of course, another former giant, Olivier Vernon. Getting paid a lot of money, but I mean, this is a pretty good group of players. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and give the four-year contracts where we need to. And I will um, see you guys at the midseason mark. We're going to simulate there. I'm going to load in the draft class as well. I don't really want Grant Delpit in the slot. I got to change up everything. You guys will see at the midseason mark. Brown's playbook is always overpowered. I think this is going to be a pretty easy rebuild. I'm shooting for maybe in four seasons, two Super Bowl appearances minimum. I think that's pretty reasonable given how powerful the Browns are in simulation. Trading David Njoku, Andrew Sandejo, and Adrian Claiborne for a first-round pick from the Cardinals. I want to stop trading for so many first-round picks. I mean, it's July. We're getting a little bit crazy with these rebuilds. But at the same time, I don't want to make these repetitive, even though they're starting to feel that way a little bit. I feel like I keep drafting the same players, so I'm going to try and go a different direction uh, in this draft and take some players maybe we haven't taken previously. And the team's going to be better picking near the bottom part of the first round, if I had to if I had to guess. So maybe not going to be in the mix for some of those uh, top picks in the draft. But really solid team. Again, I'm going to load in the draft class. I'm using ATL Falcons. I talk about this in like every single rebuild video. So if you skip around, you might miss it. But I'm using ATL Falcons 2021 class. I'm going to load that in at week three. I think is when you can do it after I change up the depth chart. Okay, six and one at the midseason mark. Not exactly shocked. Again, the Browns are just an overpowered team in simulation. Also, I turned my lights off. My eyes are just kind of getting strained, and I look like I'm about to cry. Uh, and that's because I'm doing another Madden rebuild. Hit that subscribe button if you're new for more fun content. But yeah, the Ravens are 7-0. Oh my goodness. That's probably our one loss of the season. Um, I really doubt the Ravens are on the schedule in like week 14 and 17. Something like that. So we probably already played them. Yeah, we lost by a field goal. And then play them in week 16 okay okay 
it's a pretty good start though can't complain this is just it, this just shows you how powerful certain teams are in sim it's like it's not about the team it's just it's about the playbooks that's really what it comes down to but uh the draft class has been loaded in i don't even know who this is who's our top free agent here pharaoh brown yeah i couldn't i couldn't recognize his face now there's not a whole lot here i want to resign tay davis is in here new york giant legend but uh, we will simulate to the playoffs, which I fully anticipate making. Team is really good. Should be really successful. Easy playoff berth. 12-4, and four, although the Bengals beat us in Week 17. Must have rested our starters. They went 8-7, and seven, to be fair, under Joe Burrow. This AFC North is, is going to be tough. The Steelers seem to be the only bad team in here right now. And the Steelers are actually pretty good in real life, in my opinion. But um, yeah, the Ravens dominated... But we were awesome. Second best offense. Probably a top 10 defense, if I had to guess as well. Yeah, third. I was going to say top five, but didn't know for sure. Baker Mayfield was unbelievable. 4,100 yards, 40 touchdowns, only eight picks. Rushing Nick Chubb was fantastic, as was Kareem Hunt. Both averaging over five yards per carry. Combined for, what, 2,000 yards? Real close if he didn't get it. I'm pretty sure it is. I think it's like 2,020 or something like that. You know, 22 touchdowns combined from them. Unreal performance. Odell was unbelievable. 93 catches for almost 1,400 yards. 14 touchdowns. Juice was pretty good. Uh, Richard Higgins was solid. Nick Chubb had six receiving touchdowns. I'd like to see that. Austin Hooper wasn't too bad either. Defensively, Grant Delpit. Ooh, he's going to put together a really strong case for defensive rookie of the year with 115 tackles, 12 for loss, one and a half sacks, and two picks. Miles Garrett had 14 sacks, though, and interceptions. Four from Denzel Ward led the way. Any forced fumbles here? Two for the squad. Any touchdowns? I see a safety for Mac Wilson. Mac Wilson also going to put together a pretty good case for defensive rookie of the year, if I had to guess. Deshaun Watson wins MVP of the 9 5 and 2 Houston Texans. How is Baker Mayfield finishing at 9 for MVP? That's terrible. AFC Offensive Player of the Year, also Deshaun Watson. Baker Mayfield at 3. Defensive Player of the Year, J.J. Watt. Miles Garrett at 4. Grant Delpit at 6. That's got to be Defensive Rookie of the Year. Offensive Rookie of the Year is Justin Herbert. And then Defensive Rookie of the Year is Grant Delpit. Mac Wilson at 5. Really good stuff from our team. This is going to be a very easy rebuild. It's funny how the Browns went from, like, impossible to unbelievably easy. But I'll take it. Not too bad. We're going to go and um, upgrade DB training boost as well as offensive line and then upgrade the team. Actually, they might have been auto-upgraded already. Probably only like two players in here. Yeah, Tay Davis and Sione Taki Taki. Our stud LB core is going to get upgraded a little bit. But uh, we'll see if we can dethrone the MVP here into Deshaun Watson. And we do. 40 to nothing. Unbelievable. I mean, <laughs> that just goes to show you these playbooks, man. We beat the Texans and their MVP... 40 to nothing. And we had to play in the wild card. One of these things is not like the other. Look at this. I mean, the, the Chiefs and Patriots score was a, a little bit lopsided, but like 25, 28, 24, 30. Yeah, and then 40 points. Unreal. But uh, we have the Chargers here and Justin Herbert in the divisional. Can the Browns advance the AFC Conference Championship? Of course they can. Winning by a touchdown, 35 to 28. Oh my goodness, this really could be the year. But it is Baker against Lamar Jackson. Super Bowl on the line. Super Bowl berth on the line. And we did not get it. It's going to be Ravens versus Buccaneers in the Super Bowl. Pretty good year, all things considered. I wish we could see the uh, score here. And we'll go that. It'll probably be within two touchdowns. I know that's not saying anything crazy, like obviously. But sometimes it's a little bit wild. Four points four points maybe i'll jump in uh, in season two but eh, i just don't really feel like doing that in season one especially when we haven't really done much of the team other than just trade andrews and deho david njoku and adrian claiborne i think was the last player we traded we'll see what we can do in re-signing probably going to be nobody i'm interested in whatsoever yeah still Farrow brown as the bucks beat the ravens 42 28 for their first super bowl win since 2000 and 2000 2000 was it 2000 mm. might it might have been 02 01 it's somewhere in there dude I, I forget i know dexter jackson was mvp does that count for something 
2003, I'm such an idiot. Andrew Luck here in free agency. He's headed to the Giants. I'm in. Antonio Brown, I mean, honestly, Antonio Brown would be a pretty good one-year signing. I know it's like he's pretty intolerable. You imagine a locker room, the media perception with Antonio Brown and Odell. Uh, the toxic. Yeah, Antonio Brown is. Dude, Odell, his attitude issues, as we get Antonio Brown, are the most overrated narrative in professional sports. That, that might be slightly a stretch. There are probably some more ridiculous ones that I am unaware of or can't think of at the moment. But, like, the only thing that he ever did was get into a, a super childish fight with Josh Norman. That's it. Like, uh, the rest seems, I don't know, totally overplayed, out of proportion by the New York idiot fans and uh, the media. And I'm fr I'm from there. I'm, I'm from New Jersey. You know, I, I heard it all the time. Even my, uh, you know, like my dad would get on Odell. I'm like, I'm like, what are you talking about? Whatever. I like I liked the passion of someone that's committed to winning. I don't know how you could be frustrated, or I don't know how you couldn't not be frustrated playing on those dog shit Giants teams either. And I say that as a Giants fan. They were terrible. But uh, yeah, we pick at number 10. And uh, we'll just see who's on the board. I don't really feel like trading up. As Micah Parsons goes to the Tennessee Titans. Here we are at number 10. I want to say in back-to-back -back years. And Jalen Waddell is way too good not to, not to pick up. That's got to be who I take. I know we've taken Javon... Uh, not Javon Holland. But we've taken him. I know we've taken Jalen Waddell before. Ooh, you know who it actually is going to be? It's going to be Dylan Moses. We need a better linebacker. I got to make that call. Another Alabama linebacker to join Mac Wilson. He's ranked number 13. We took my number 10. I think Dylan Moses is a stud. He would have been a really high first round pick if not for tearing his ACL a year ago. Dylan Moses is a beast. Good speed, good hit power. Um, pretty good in coverage, pretty good tackler. I mean, Dylan Moses is the complete package. Probably will opt to move Mac Wilson inside and then play Dylan Moses as an outside linebacker as we will simulate to pick number 30. Ooh, Devontae Smith. That might be the Alabama receiver we opt to pick up. Although Quincy Roche in the first round wouldn't be bad either. Now, that would give us a little bit of flexibility because we could move Olivier Vernon, who is a massive contract. And we do need to clear up some space as Odell is up to superstar X Factor. Love that. Now, we don't necessarily need receivers super badly, but... I mean, Antonio Brown's on a one-year deal, and he's going to regress. Grant Delpit, Delpit is superstar. Miles Garrett should be going up to superstar X-Factor eventually. Could use a corner, but I don't really want any at this particular spot. Mac Wilson, we're going to move to the inside, as I mentioned. What position do I really want here? I mean, it's probably Devontae Smith. It probably is. That'd be the best move for the future. We already drafted a linebacker. I think they're going to be better edges in future draft classes. And it is random, but that seems to be the way it goes. I'm going to take Devontae Smith. Add a great receiver to the mix. Number 20, we took him at 30. 74 overall. Star, better development. Good speed. And Devontae Smith really is just super well-rounded. I think he has a very, very high floor as a receiver in the NFL. He's just someone that knows how to get open and catch the football. And that's what you look for for a receiver. So... Devontae Smith, very good addition to our team. Another Alabama player. We're turning into the Ravens. We're just taking their strategy. Draft Alabama players. Jedrick Wills, Mac Wilson this year. We get uh, already two in Devontae Smith and Dylan Moses. Maybe we'll take another one here in the second. We'll go... Uh... Ooh, I feel like Eric Stokes looks pretty good with his coverage. But... I think it's a safer bet to take a guy like Darian Kendrick, who we know we're going to play in the slot, and he's a slot type really fast. Let's take Darian Kendrick here. 72 overall, only normal development, but he's ranked number 59. We took him at 62. Pretty good value for the pick, and someone that will probably develop into a, a decent player for us. Trending Chris Hubbard a third and a fourth this year for a first next year from the LA Chargers, and that will do it for the draft. So this is the way the offense is going to look. It looks really good. I feel like Jarvis Landry is going to have a breakout year. I'm putting him in the slot. He should be pretty unbelievable just because that's the way this works. I could have Odell in the slot to put up unreal numbers again or even Devontae Smith to get him upgraded pretty quickly. But I'm going to just keep Jarvis Landry there for the time being. This is the defense. Linebacking core still doesn't look amazing, but Dylan Moses is a 77 overall right outside linebacker. 
up from a 75 at inside. Mac Wilson, 75 on the inside. Jacob Phillips in there. Defensive line looking solid, and the secondary is coming along. Actually, you know what? I'm going to put Devontae Smith in the slot as our primary target. He'll he'll get upgraded pretty quickly in that regard. Probably even the lead the league, or lead our team. I don't want to say the league, but, uh, the league, but we'll lead the team in probably receptions and yards and touchdowns. But we will simulate to the midseason mark. All right, what is our record? Six and two. Not too bad. Not too bad. We will upgrade the players. Probably a few guys in there who need upgrading, and indeed, there are. We are, once again, primed for a playoff push. I don't know if we want to bring back Antonio Brown or not. Like, he's going to be regressing. We have the best offense in the league right now. What's he doing receiving-wise? He's, uh, he's got 49 catches. It's actually funny. Jarvis Landry has five catches. That's because he's not in the slot, and he's our third receiver. <laughs> so, uh, Devontae Smith getting the bulk of uh, catches there between those two. Odell performing pretty great. Antonio Brown being uh, solid. That's actually a Jarvis Landry stat line. Averaging less than 10 yards a catch. <laughs> but still has a ton of catches. All right, we're not doing too bad. Not doing too badly. Ooh, Larry Ogunjobi in there. I mean, we're done with Taiwan Taylor and Rashard Higgins. Terrence Mitchell, Kevin Johnson can walk as well. It's really going to be the most important to bring back Larry Ogunjobi. I can always franchise tag. Oh, he's going to be cheap too. I can always franchise tag Antonio Brown if I want to bring him back, but I probably don't want to. He's going to regress to like an 85 maybe. So, don't think so. Playoff time. We're going to make the playoffs. 10 and 6 that so we snuck in. Ravens won the division at 12 and 4. Lamar Jackson is a cheat code. Offense dropped to 6th, which is not bad, clearly. And then defense was also ranked 6th. That's what it means when it doesn't show a number. It means it's just the same. Mayfield was still really good. Nick Chubb was really good. Kareem Hunt was still really good. We just took a little bit of a step back in general. Odell still dominated, actually. And Devontae Smith had a pretty decent year. Antonio Brown was solid. He had over 10 yards. He catched nine touchdowns. Pretty nice in there. Defensively, Mac Wilson led the team in tackles. At eight tackles for loss, one and a half sacks, and three picks. Really good year for him. 29 sacks for Miles Garrett. Are you kidding me? 29? Oh my goodness. Not only did Miles Garrett, I said Miles Jack, maybe. I don't think so, but Miles Garrett. Not only did he set the record for sacks in the season, he blew it out of the water. He had almost two sacks a game. Not quite, but almost, like real close. Olivier Vernon had nine, five for Larry Ogunjobi. 29 sacks, are you kidding me? Interceptions, three for Mac Wilson, three for Grant Delpit. Defensive player of the year, without question, should be Miles Garrett. I'm not sure if they're going to give it to him. They definitely should, but... That remains to be seen. I think Mac Wilson's going to be in the conversation as Deshaun Watson wins back-to-back -back MVPs for the Houston Texans. Baker Mayfield in there at number six. AFC Offensive Player of the Year, Deshaun Watson. Baker at four. Defensive Player of the Year, it is Miles Garrett. It had to have been. 29 sacks. Are you stupid? Offensive Rookie of the Year, Trevor Lawrence. Devontae Smith at two. Quarterback's going to take that award nine times out of ten as Jordan Wilson also in there. And then Defensive Rookie of the Year is Dylan Moses. Gotta love that. Dar uh, Darion Kendrick in there at number nine. This is the team as we head into the playoffs. Looking really good. The only real hole is at right guard as Devontae Smith is up to a 79 overall star development. Dylan Moses, superstar dev. Everything looking pretty good here. Might need an upgrade at corner and safety. And the defensive line's in an interesting spot. I'd be shocked if Miles Garrett didn't get up to superstar X Factor. But we will see if we can beat Patrick Mahomes and the Chiefs in the wild card. And we cannot. Losing 25-14. Not too good here in season two. As we are out of the playoffs really early. But heading into another free agency. A lot of money. Some good draft picks as well. We got to upgrade right guard, corner, defensive tackle, slash edge, and then maybe safety. Do I want to bring back Antonio Brown? I don't think it makes sense to. What's he down to? 85? I'm out. Patrick Mahomes in here. No thanks. Could add another great running back to our group. Trent Williams doesn't really help us out too much right now. Keanu Neal would be an interesting addition. Move Grant Delpit to free safety. That's not too bad. That's something to consider. Darius Slay would be a good one-year contract type player. I mean, we, we don't have to give him that much money either. 
That could be good enough to sign Darius Slay. Also, I thought I clicked on him at an 88 overall. Maybe I was just tripping. I probably was just misread that. OJ Howard in there. Doesn't really help us. Justin Herbert already in sim because uh, that's it's stupid with the rookies. Did I say sim? I, I, already in free agency? I don't know. Um, yeah, Keanu Neal. Keanu Neal, I think, would be a good contract. Ah, maybe we'll just draft the safety. It's not worth it. But if we can get Darius Slay, that would be worth it. And we do. Darius Slay to the Cleveland Browns. And I think it's time for the draft. All right, picking at number seven. Let me see the way this draft has, uh, or this draft class is shaping out, shake, shaking out, shake, shaking up, shaping something. Uh, <laughs> a center inside the top ten. Give me a break. Ricky Scott looks unreal. Also, is like his uh, top skills are all out of order. That's someone who's probably going to go really high in the draft. Might be worth trading up. Oh my goodness, look at all these first round edge rushers. Even a baller in Jamison Lane. Skip the combines. Hey, Roger Goodell, up yours. I'm not doing it. Gotta love that. Adrian Glover, 43 reps. Ooh, this is an absolute wall on the defensive line. Jamal Rand. Jamal. Jamal. Okay. This draft class is really good. Okay, now the question is, do we make moves for some of these players? Like, even Marquise Whitfield looks phenomenal. We pick at number 7 and then 22. I'm not sure we're going to be able to move up for some of these guys, but this is a really, really strong class. Two-thirds, one this year, one next year, and Carl Joseph for the number one overall pick from the Jaguars. Pretty good move for us, I'm not going to lie. And um, I might even trade down one spot. I don't know if Ricky Scott's going to go number one overall. I wouldn't be shocked, but then I'll just trade down even more and get more value. So I might just trade with the Broncos and see what we can do. Because more picks is going to mean it's easier to uh, navigate the board and make more trades. Because this is a really, really strong draft class. I just kind of want to draft some studs. So I'll see if I can make this trade for number two, uh, a first next year, and a second this year from the Broncos. We'll be able to. I'll just have to trade like a fifth and a sixth, whatever. And that should be going through. Ooh, it doesn't. What about a fourth and a fifth? That one should go through. Still doesn't. What about a fourth this year and a fourth next year? Probably still won't. I'm probably going to have to part. I don't know where I just got an action from. Probably going to have to part with a second next year to push the needle a little bit more. And then a fourth this year. And that definitely will go through. And are you kidding me? I'm looking like a fool. All right. It's, a, it's number one and a second this year. For a one this year, next year, and a two this year from Denver. And uh, if they take the edge rusher, that's totally fine. I wouldn't even be mad about that at all. And uh, I would have been mad. <laughs> He's not available. We're going to take Ricky Scott at number two. Welcome to the team. 78 overall, number one in the draft. We took him at number two. Star or better development. He is a very nice Olivier Vernon replacement. He can fly. 86 speed, 82 finesse moves. Really, really well-rounded, really good player. Olivier Vernon and a first gets us number three from the Bengals. Now, I could use that on the defensive tackle. I don't know that I'm going to. I might. I mean, we're just having fun in the draft. I might as well, right? And then trade Sheldon Richardson. Hold on. Before I do that, we'll see if I can unload Sheldon Richardson to the Giants, Lions, or Vikings. I'll write that down so I don't forget. Sheldon Richardson and the uh, second pick in the second round for number four. Yeah, I am exploiting like a mug right now. It is what it is. We are just getting crazy picks to get crazy players. Adrian Glover out of Vandy is going to be our Sheldon Richardson replacement. 78 overall. St uh, star, better development. Almost at superstar. I don't know that for a fact. Could be, though. Hopefully it is. He's uh, pretty well-rounded and exceptionally strong. How big is he? 6'4", 315. And then give me Marquise Whitfield out of UCLA. Also 78 overall. How many 78s are in this class? He's ranked number four. We took him at four. Star or better development. 86 speed as well. He looks really, really solid. And uh, he's going to play left outside linebacker for us. So that's uh, that's perfect. Now, he's going to be more pass rush oriented than what we normally might want in a 4-3. But that's going to be it's gonna be fine. He's going to be a beast. Now, what do we want to do here at number seven? Antoine Wayne to play right guard. 
He's agile. Should fit in real well. And he's fast. Let's take him. 76 overall, ranked number 7. We took him at number 7. Star or better development. Gotta love that. Good strength. Good run blocking. Good pass blocking. Good lead blocking. Good impact blocking. Good everything. He's 77 speed. What a monster. As we simulate to number 22. I hope his safety is still available. He might not be. He is Alex Silver out of Notre Dame. Welcome to the team. Rank number 8. We took him at 22. Only a 75 overall with normal dev. Not a bad pick for the spot, but normal development kind of kills him. Oh my goodness. Big trade. Andrew Billings, a first and a second for Derwin James. Dude, I tried to get Buda Baker. I tried to get all these like different like, kind of mid-tier players. Yet, the one trade that actually goes through is for Derwin James. What an addition to our secondary is Grant Delpit's going to slide over and play free safety. This team continues to get better and better and better. We've got rookies starting all over the field at left outside linebacker, defensive tackle at left end, at right guard. Wayne's going to play right guard for the boys. This team is incredible. This is a Super Bowl caliber team, I think, without question. Miles Garrett goes up to superstar X Factor. Wow. I mean, like, this team is spectacular. High hopes. High hopes. Dylan Moses is not going to be a rush end. Like, why would that be a thing? It's going to be Ricky Scott. Okay, mid-season mark. We are 7-1. and one. Ravens finally falling off a little bit. Miles Garrett appears to be our top priority free agent. I'm going to do another season after this anyway. So uh, we're going to do tight end training boost. And that seems to be it. Derwin James, Miles Garrett, Nick Chubb. I mean, Nick Mullins. I don't know why you're in there. We have so many free agents to bring back. I'm not sure that we're going to be able to do it. With the addition of Derwin James. We have 95 mil in cap after this contract. But this is a really, really big contract. Especially for a safety. But uh, Derwin James should accept that. He does. I, Miles Garrett's going to be stupid expensive. This is, a, this is a lot of money. But Miles Garrett is... He wants more money. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Love that. Alright, we brought back Jack Conklin... Baker wants uh, a bigger bonus and longer contract. Didn't touch Darius Slay. Brought back Denzel Ward. Not going to worry about Kareem Hunt right now or Austin Hooper. I want Hooper back. Kareem Hunt we don't really need since we have Nick Chubb who re-signed. We do got to bring back Miles Garrett. We do got to. Do have to bring back Miles Garrett. I mean, it's going to be expensive. But the team is spectacular. And we will simulate to the playoffs should be an easy first round buy, but you never know. I'm sure the Ravens will go crazy in the second half of the season and win like 11 games somehow. Yep, first round buy. Went 14 2. The Ravens, as predicted, won 11 games somehow. It'll be the first offense in the league. Baker's numbers were not incredible, though. I mean, they're really good. Second best offense, but because Nick Chubb stole the show. I mean, Baker's numbers were great. I mean, 4,000 yards, 33 TDs, only three picks. He just didn't really lead the league in any of these categories. Wasn't even close. Nick Chubb, though, 20 rushing touchdowns. He was awesome. Kareem Hunt was also awesome. I mean, he really kicked off this great season. Odell Beckham Jr., 10 touchdowns, as did Devontae Smith. Jarvis Landry with a good season. Austin Hooper was uh, solid. Defensively, Mack Wilson, really good season. Miles Garrett had 16 and a half sacks. Let's get to it in a minute. A uh, pretty good year for the defensive line. Eight for Ogan Joby, six and a half for Glover. However, Ricky Scott only had four and a half sacks. Dylan Moses had four. I mean, Marquise Whitfield only had one. Weird. We didn't really even get a ton of interceptions either. Interesting. But we stopped teams from scoring, which is good. Andrew Luck found his way back to the Titans, as he seems to be going to the Titans in a lot of rebuilds that we do. AFC Offense Player of the Year is Andrew Luck. Baker at 5. Defense Player of the Year, Willie Gay. Miles Garrett at number 5. Offensive Rookie of the Year, Robert Franklin. We should have a lot of guys in competition for this on the defense side of the ball. Adrian Glover wins it, though. Marquise Whitfield at 2. Ricky Scott at 4. Alex Silver at 5. Ooh, Ravens in the divisional. Let's see the team. Maybe we have some uh, superstar development players. That'd be nice. Antoine Wayne. Not really who I expected might have it, but Antoine Wayne had superstar development. Really, really, really nice. It's kind of rare to draft superstar dev players in general, let alone on the offensive line. So, always love to see that. And then defensively, ooh, Ricky Scott with a little superstar X Factor action. That is uh, extremely rare. So, you love to see that. 
Gotta love Superstar X Factor. Whitfield with Star, Glover with Star. But the team overall, again, is looking just fantastic. So we are ready to go, ready to take on the Baltimore Ravens. As this team is, again, like, tremendous. Oh, they're a 90 overall, too. They are, they are loaded. Pretty close game, low scoring so far, but these are two of the top defenses in the league, along with high-powered offenses, and I guess the defense is winning the show so far. Winning the show? That's not really an expression. But we are down 31-17, 34-17. We got to mount a little bit of a comeback here. I'll see if I can jump in and do anything. First and 10, not enough time. We need to turn over really badly. Otherwise, we're going to face another early elimination. Wanted to make it to two Super Bowls in this rebuild. Doesn't look like we're even going to see one at this rate. There's a two-minute warning. We need a turnover. All right, down by 10. It looks like we're going to be down by 13 because Justin Tucker probably going to nail this kick, and he does. So we're going to have... I was not offsides. Roughing the kicker? Okay, that's uh, going to end the game. I mean, did I do that? Are you kidding me? Is that the roughing the kicker? Are you kidding me? Oh my god, look at this. Doe for it, missed terribly. Kick is already in the air. I can't control my player at this point. And he steps into Justin Tucker as it goes on. That's roughing the kicker. That ends the game. I mean... Are you kidding me? <laughs> this game is so terrible. I'll see you for season four. Cardinals and Ravens were in the Super Bowl. As I do have to bring back Miles Garrett. We still have a lot of money. I just need to... Uh, what does he want? Contract length. So he wants more money and more bonus. So he's really expensive, but he's a player that we need to have. So he comes back. So the most expensive contract by a mile was Baker Mayfield. And he's really going to kill our money going into the future. I don't really know what we can do here to create more space. Like Darius Slay is going to have to walk, which is a little bit upsetting. Kareem Hunt, we can't bring back. All right, we can't afford anybody else, so we'll deal with kicker and punter at another moment. <laughs> we're running low on funds. Mahomes in here again. Yeah, we're into the negative on cap room. We'll just have to, uh, we'll figure it out. I'm just going to simulate a trade to next season. Final season, let's get it going. This is the team for the final season. Looks really, really solid. We don't need Antonio Brown. We don't really even need Darius Slay. I mean, Darius Slay would have been nice. Don't get me wrong. But we, we don't need him, all right? This is a good group. This is a team that can definitely get it done. Moses is not going to be a rush end. Why would they do that? Ricky Scott's still going to be in that role. Dude, this, this game kills me. At the midseason mark, we are... Five and two, I'll take that. See uh, and the Seahawks. Steelers are one and six. The Bengals are five and two, and the Ravens are six and one. This might not be a playoff team because this team, or this division is so loaded. There's so many loaded teams. This is going to be real tough. Okay, not ideal. I know I say that all the time, but it really isn't ideal. I mean, like somehow this loaded team might not make the playoffs. I stopped the sim and we're ten and two. There we go. That should be guaranteed playoffs now at 10 and 2. And we'll probably finish like, I don't know, 12 and 4. Something like that. I mean, the Ravens and the Bengals are not letting up. This is still not an easy pass, a path to the playoffs whatsoever. We just got to, uh, if we win out, I mean, we're going to be in a really good spot. But we're pro we probably won't. Give me, like, give me 12 wins. First round bye. There we go. 13 wins. I will take it. Bengals and Ravens each finish with 10 First offense, show me first defense. Fifth, I'll take top five defense. Baker Mayfield, once again, unbelievable. Rushing Nick Chubb was fantastic. Trey Sermon was not a good replacement to uh, Kareem Hunt, let me tell you, though. But Jarvis Landry and Odell went off. Both had 1,200 yards combined for a ton of touchdowns, 24 to be exact. Austin Hooper, really good year. Devontae Smith was solid as well. Defensively, Mac Wilson had a hell of a year. Six and a half sacks, three picks, 105 tackles. Miles My Garrett had 17 sacks. Ricky Scott was pretty good. Adrian Glover, Larry Ogunjobi all had really good years. Derwin James with five picks. Yeah, this defense came to play. This defense came to play. Andrew Luck wins MVP. Baker Mayfield at two. AFC Offense Player of the Year, Andrew Luck. Baker Mayfield at two. D 
Defensive Player of the Year, Miles Garrett. Again, Mac Wilson at seven. Offensive Rookie of the Year, Lincoln Ray. No Browns. Defensive Rookie of the Year, Jamal Lane. Jason Stockton at number nine. This is a team that needs to win a Super Bowl. We're so good. We're so good. All right, we're jumping in here versus the Colts. They're an 88 overall. They're really good, too. Usually in the playoffs, you don't see teams that are this loaded. You'll see, like, maybe the Colts would be an 84 overall, but wow. I mean, like, we have not had an easy rebuild so far based on the uh, opposition being as talented as they have been. Gotta love going down early, but... uh. I was going to say we tied it up, and we've tied it up again as the Colts took the lead momentarily. But we finally go on top, 20-17. Now 27-17. Just play some defense, man. We're going to go down. It's 27-27. We're going to take the lead, 34-27. The Colts are shut down. Oh, my goodness. What a stop from this Browns defense. They were so close to scoring. I mean, Trubisky, <laughs> Mitch Trubisky almost brought it back. But our defense held strong near the end there. I thought for sure that they were going to tie it up just with the uh, Madden Sim logic. But no, our defense held strong and we are headed to the conference championship. Again, finally, one game away from the Super Bowl. Don't be the Ravens. It's the Bengals. Joe Burrow and the Bengals coming to first energy in Cleveland, Ohio. They're an 86 overall. Let's get it done. Got the lead here early, but the Bengals answer with a quick field goal. If we can just go ahead by two scores, we're going to be good to go. But we can't score. Nobody can score. Had 13-3, to now 20-3. to That should be the game, but who knows if Joe Burrow's got any magic left. Seems like he doesn't. That's going to be the game. 23-6 to as the Cleveland Browns are in the Super Bowl. Joe Burrow was terrible. Threw for only 154 yards and no touchdowns. But we're finally going to the Super Bowl here in the final season. Saints in the Super Bowl. This is the final team. Show me some good development trade upgrades just so it looks prettier on the screen. And Baker Mayfield is up to superstar X-Factor. Jarvis Landry is up to superstar. That's already two for the offense. Show me some for the defense. Please. Dylan Moses, superstar X-Factor. The rest are unchanged. But this is the squad. We got four superstar X-Factors on defense and a superstar dev. And then on offense, two superstars, three superstars even, as Jedrick Wills is up to a 94. Three superstar X-Factors at 93, 99, and 98 overall, respectively. This is the Super Bowl team, 92 overall. We're headed to Arizona to take on the Saints. I don't even know who their quarterback would be at this point. It's not Drew Brees. It can't be. It's probably not going to be Jameis Winston. I mean, it's probably going to be a quarterback that they drafted. I mean, maybe they could have signed somebody. Is it going to be Patrick Mahomes? Nah, he would have popped up. I don't know who their their quarterback's going to be. We'll find out. I'm excited to find out who their quarterback is. We can find out here. It is Jameis Winston. This is a Super Bowl victory. There's absolutely no way Jameis Winston wins a Super Bowl here. Tell me. Tell me he can't. But they start off with an early touchdown. Almost looked like it was going to be two. And there it is. They're up 14-0. We haven't scored in the first half. We're down 21. Making a little bit of a comeback here. Making a big comeback. 21-16. Make it 24-16. Oh, that is a huge stop and score. Under three minutes to play. It is 24-all. We're going to hop in here on defense and see if we can get a huge turnover. We have so many stars on the defense side of the ball. Just have to make a play. It's going to be a check down. I don't know how no one was there in zone coverage. That wasn't my zone. No one was there. Why is Mac Wilson facing the wrong way? I don't know. It worked out. We need to stop here. Oh, they're running the ball? Okay. They're taking the field goal. It's going to be a bit of a longer field goal. This isn't necessarily a gimme. But, I mean, they'll probably make it. Setting up from the 40. This makes it a 50-yarder. I mean, it, it still is a little bit long, but Will Lutz is really good. And the kick is up and good. We're going to have 53 seconds to either score a touchdown or a field goal to tie. Not unreasonable. We've got a really good offense, but no timeouts could hurt us a lot. This might only be like four or five plays. Let's start off with a good return. Not really. We just really need Odell to get open. And we're going to be fine. Pick up that block. Somebody's got to get open. We throw that in there. Oh my good, we got we got Odell. We got Odell. Oh my goodness. 
That's a huge play. That's going to put us almost in field goal range. Can we choose a new play here? It's going to be down to like 25 seconds already. I mean, this is, this is not good. A sack would be really bad here. I'm rolling out for no reason. We're actually going to run. That's field goal range. There we go, Baker. 14 seconds. Is this a shot at the end zone? I mean, that's a really easy way to throw an interception and end the game. They want us to take the 52-yarder already. I might. I don't want to throw over the middle of the field. I think corners is going to be our best bet. They're bringing the safeties up. That's so interesting. I mean... Actually, you know what the move is? This looks like this is probably going to be man coverage. Oh, this is so bad. I'm going to get sacked here. We got Odell. We got Odell. Catch the ball. Let's go, baby. Odell Beckham Jr. Touchdown in crunch time. Oh, my goodness. What was that coverage? It was covered to invert. It was disguised as like, man, not accounting for the best player on the field, maybe. You know, Odell Beckham Jr. We're getting after the quarterback here. He's going to lob it up. Oh, my goodness. Dude, these deflections kill me. The play is going to be rush the passer heavy with like... Yeah, we're gonna run we're gonna run nickel double a gap mid blitz get guys off the ball user grant delpit and just make sure no one's beating us over the top they're lobbing it up towards the corner and that is incomplete and the browns are super bowl champions in 2022 i want to say 31 27 is your final finally the browns have managed to win the ever elusive Lombardi Trophy Super Bowl Championship here in the early 2020s. But that is going to do it for me and the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Subscribe if you are new. Feels good to finally win a Super Bowl. And I will see you guys in the next one. Take it easy.